Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. So excited to do today's Neville Goddard lecture, The Unalloyed. This is one of my favorite lectures, but up until now, I have not been able to find a transcript for it. There's several that I have found the audio for without the transcript, and some of them are still hard to understand. One of the reasons I wanted to read some of these lectures is many of those recordings are really terrible. You can barely hear what he's saying. They're recorded in rooms from a long distance. So it is nice to be able to bring these words into another perspective with music in the background, that type of thing. But this is really one of my favorite lectures. And so I have a rough transcript that does have slight flaws. It doesn't have question and answers at the end. But it's very powerful. One of my very favorites. Can't wait to share it with you. I feel I've had the vision that he describes in this. The vision of the tree. And it's my favorite part of the lecture. Please let me know what is yours. The Unalloyed by Neville Goddard Tonight's subject is the unalloyed. We all know the unalloyed is the unmixed the pure, the complete, and you and I are seeking that state, the complete unalloyed. We are making our exodus from this age into another age, and the exodus of man begins when man accepts the God of Israel. If the journey seems long, it is only because the children of Israel, those who have accepted the God of Israel, find it difficult to keep the tents, for the God of Israel is I am. That's his name forever. And when I find it difficult to keep the tents, when the journey seems very long. So here, we're moving from this age into another age, an entirely different age. And we will move when we have completely accepted the God of Israel. And the one who has not accepted it, no matter what he has done, no matter how kind and generous, how wonderful he is, he doesn't move from this age. Now you can take this from every level of your own being. You and I were made subject unto futility, not willingly, but by reason of the will of him who subjected us in hope that you and I would be set free from this bondage of decay and obtain the glorious liberty of the children of God. That is our hope. But while we are subjected to it, and this presence who subjected us disappears from view, He takes up residence in us, and we have to find Him. He is the unalloyed, the pure, the unmixed. No child born of woman could cross the threshold that admits to conscious life, unaided by the light of God. The Bible speaks of the life of God as the blood of Jesus. We are told the life is in the blood, and one day man will find it. And one day this tree of good and evil and this cloven pine will be ribbon from top to bottom and the imprisoned spirit set free. Every one of us, but not until we completely accept the God of Israel and that God of Israel is simply, I am. You can start this night from where you are to where you would like to be in this world of Caesar, led by the God of Israel. In other words, when you know what you are and you know what you'd like to be, instead of what you seem to be, you assume, I am that. Assuming I am that, or I am it, or I am he. Call it what you will and sleep in the assumption that you are really the being that you would like to be. 
sleep in this state. You move across a bridge of incidents that leads you to the fulfillment of your assumption. But when you forget the tense and you say, I will be, I was, or any other way, you delay the journey. And it seems so long only because man in his journey finds it difficult to keep the tents of the God he promised to worship. So Elijah said to the people of Israel, he came near to them, and he said to them, concerning this presence of the I Am, how long will you go limping between two? How long? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is God, then follow him. You say you've chosen the Lord as God, the Lord of Israel. Then do not start limping between these two opinions. Either choose one and reject the other, or you reject what you should take and reject the other. In other words, there is no cause of the phenomena of life outside of your own wonderful human imagination. You are bringing it into being morning, noon, and night. So how long will you go limping between two opinions? If the Lord is God, choose him. If Baal is God, then choose him. And then we turn to the book of Joshua. And Joshua said to the people of Israel, Choose this day whom you will serve. As for myself and my household, we choose the Lord. And the people of Israel replied, We choose the Lord. And then Joshua said, Then you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord. And they replied, We are witnesses against ourselves. And then the journey starts from the Exodus, from this age into that age, or from my present state of consciousness that I want to express in this world depends upon my choice of the God of Israel. So if I choose the God of Israel to guide me, to lead me, and his name is I Am, I may find it difficult to keep the tents. And instead of sleeping night after night in the assumption that I am already the man that I would be, I may go to sleep in the belief I will be that delays it. I may go to sleep in any other kind of a belief, but I must to the best of my ability, not only choose the God of Israel, but remain as faithful as I can to my choice. So tonight, you can take anything you want if you choose the God of Israel. And may I tell you that if there is anyone in this audience this night who is an Orthodox Jew, and you think because I say I must choose and you must choose the God of Israel, and you are born into a family who are Jews, that you have already made your choice, you are mistaken. Your concept of God is just as far removed from the God as the Christian's concept of God. They had it up there in space, some place, out there in time and space. The God of which I speak, I speak of your own wonderful human imagination. That's the God. That's the God of Israel. And so you choose him to guide you. So tonight, when you know exactly what you want, you sleep in the assumption that you are already the man that you want to be and fall asleep in that state. And that state will externalize itself within your world. You either do it or say that I will be that man and delay the process. But may I tell you, you will never reach, I will be. You can only reach, I am it. And so everyone here, try it. Try this state for the day is coming that this wonderful tree that we are. I saw it so clearly in vision. It's just a tree. Many have never returned since they heard me speak of this ancient tree. And here is Blake. I never read him when I had my vision. And when he said, Hear the vultures, 
above whose present past and future seas, whose ears have heard the holy word that walked among the ancient trees. For that night I saw the trees, and I saw this wonderful vision of earth, and it all is like a tree, unnumbered trees. In the eighth chapter of Mark, when the man's eye was opened, he was asked, What do you see? He said, I see men like trees walking. And here they told me in this vision that no one in that state, where I was believed for one moment, that anyone could come here and ever return. This to them was death, absolute death. They did not know God's plan to insert himself as you, as me, as everyone in the tree, and then put us in furnaces of affliction, real furnaces of affliction, as we're told in the 48th chapter of the book of Isaiah. I have tried you in the furnaces of affliction for my own sake. For my own sake I do it. For how should my name be proclaimed? I will not give my glory to another. And so he puts himself as us through the furnaces of affliction. And when we are the unalloyed pure gold, which is his blood, then comes that pine. The cloven pine is ribbon from top to bottom and the imprisoned spirit set free. And may I tell you, when you see it, you will know it. You will see this golden glow and you will say within yourself, I know it is myself, O oh, my divine creator and redeemer. And you will fuse with it and then rise to the very height. Can't go any higher. You will rise to the very limit as you fuse with this golden liquid light which is the blood of God. But on this level, the same thing holds good on all levels. It's the same principle. I make my exit from where I am to where I want to be only when I accept the God of Israel and the God of Israel as I am. I call him by no other name, just I am. I don't say I am Neville or I am John or I am Mary, just I am. On that I can put anything. I can say, I am healthy, wealthy, known, unknown, anything. It's entirely up to me. Accept the God of Israel and then put the mask upon him for he is the actor. I am is the actor and the assumption is the mask the actor wears. That's why I assume that I am and I name it. And when I name, then I rise, a moving across a bridge of incidents, which leads me to the fulfillment of that which I assume that I am. So this is the God of which I speak. And then will come that moment in time when you move from this age to that age, where everything then is completely subject to your imaginative power. For you are God. You are God now, but you do not know it, and you find it difficult keeping the tense. Most of us don't think in terms of the tense. We think in terms of something outside itself in some strange part of the world or part of the universe. So the inner world of which I speak tonight will come right down to this one simple state. I am not mixed with anything. I don't say I am an African, I am an American, I'm a Russian, I'm a white man, I'm a Negro. I say nothing, just simply I am. That's my God. If I should say to you now that some Russian is more proud of being Russian than he is a being I am, you might in some strange way rejoice. But I'll turn it around and ask of the whole vast 190 million of us are we more proud of being an American than of being Christ? I am is Christ. Are we more proud of being white than of being Christ? 
are we more proud of being you name it than being christ and christ is simply i am this morning's mail brought a letter typewritten unsigned but a little type perplexed i can't answer your letter if you're here tonight you say you were terribly disturbed last sunday morning because of what i said and then you went into all this detail about our country being completely eaten by subversion may i tell you if you are here tonight imagining creates reality you couldn't discuss with me either in the letter that you wrote or verbally or in any other way and not create what you discussed we are incapable of discussing anything as an object that is in the opinion of imagining on some level or levels you couldn't do it i tell you imagining creates reality there is no fiction in our world i can sit down here now and imagine something that is not based upon fact there's not one fact in the world to support it and wait if i am faithful to the god of israel for the god of israel is i am but i'm doing it and if i know all things are possible to this god that i have discovered all i need to do is wait and it's externalized in my world so when you wrote me this long detailed typewritten letter if you are present may i tell you i was perplexed you sign yours perplexed i ask you to share with me your experiences now what i said last sunday morning to disturb you i really don't know i was trying to explain what the creative power of god is it's called in scripture jesus christ jesus christ is personified and we take the personification as a person and go sound asleep make some little icon of him and stick it on the wall or make some picture of him and put it on the wall and we think that is christ that's not christ christ is the creative power and the wisdom of god and if those who wrote the story personified this quality it's perfectly all right always bear in mind it's a personification of a quality of a power this creative power of god and don't worship the personification it's not a person jesus christ is in you i tell you a mystery a mystery hidden for ages and for generations christ in you is the hope of glory christ in me is my hope and glory yes then where is he your capacity to imagine that's he and all things are possible to him yes well then test him and see come test me and see if i am not the being that i tell you i am i am the creative power of the universe that's what he's telling me and so i've been able to test him i can imagine that i am what at the moment my reason denies my senses deny everything denies and if i am faithful to the tense i am this then i will become it yes and if i do become it will i then forget how it happened i may that's the journey that man takes in his exodus from this age to the other age you're always forgetting and find it very very difficult to keep the tense but the journey starts when man is bold enough to accept the god of israel and the only god of israel is i am if a rabbi should tell you his name is jehovah turn unless he knows jehovah means i am no matter how wise they are all the ritual and all the ceremony and all the things on the outside it means nothing if he doesn't know who the god really is and that god is simply i am and if you believe it accept it as you're told the people of israel did choose this day whom you will serve for myself and my household we choose the lord now you choose and they said we choose the lord now you are witnesses against yourself you can't pass the buck from now on and say he is against me you've chosen the lord as the only lord 
Therefore, you are witnesses against yourselves. So tomorrow, something doesn't go as you think it ought to go. And you look around for some scapegoat and you think, he is doing it, she is doing it, they're doing it. And the minute you begin to say, they're doing it, you've forgotten your choice for your choice was, I will serve the God of Israel and only the God of Israel. And that God is I am. So you should ask yourself, what am I doing? Where did I go wrong in my assumption that I am the man or the woman that I want to be? If I want to be this, that, or the other, then I can't say I will be that. I must dare to assume I am that right now. Although at the moment reason denies it, the senses deny it, I must persist in this assumption. There isn't one story told in I'm not selling the book because it isn't available. It's not on the table tonight. The Law and the Promise. There are 40 case histories and everyone is based upon that simple choice of the God of Israel. I didn't mention the words of God of Israel, but that is their choice. I'm not living in my home, said the doctor, a lovely home with many units to rent. Bring in my income, allowing me my office and my own space for my personal life. And yet I have units bringing me in income. And he didn't have a nickel, not one penny. His name is Dr. Moore. A total stranger goes by and stops in to see him, not as a doctor, to visit him as a potential client, for he was a builder. He had the money, he had the vision, and saw this empty lot. And he built it for Dr. Moore without one penny and out of Dr. Moore's pocket because Dr. Moore at the time was given to saving every penny he could for his old age. As he says, and he couldn't venture into this, although he would like to do it. When he heard this, he said, it cost me nothing to do this, so I will simply sleep in the assumption that it is built. And he slept in the assumption that the building was done. Then a total stranger drives by and stops in and proposes the building and raises the money and completes the building and turns the key over to him. There is not one of the 40 stories that isn't based upon the God of Israel as our God and that God is I am. So tonight, if you really know what you want in this world and you're willing to take this God as the only God, don't turn to any other God and then assume that I have it or I am it or whatever it is and sleep as though it were true. May I tell you in a way that you cannot consciously devise, you'll wake tomorrow under compulsion to move in certain directions and no matter where you go, it may seem wrong, but upon reflection, it will prove to be right. It will be the thing you should have done. You'll meet this party, that party, the other party. It will all add up to the fulfillment of your assumption if you are faithful to the God of Israel. So when Joshua asked the question, and the word Joshua is the Hebraic word for Jesus, it was Joshua that led the people across the river into the promised land. Moses couldn't do it. He's buried in man as that power. Joshua comes out and does it. Joshua is your own wonderful I amness. It's spelled just like Yehovah with a shin ayin at the end of it for many marvelous reasons. If I take the name Yod He Vau He and analyze it for you, Yod is a hand, a creative hand. He is a window, the eye of the body. Vav is a nail, and the last one is a He, what I see internally. The first He. I will now so feel it, I will externalize it in my world. That's the yad he vau he. In the word Jesus or Joshua, the same word yad he vau, the same first three, but then shin ayin. Shin is a tooth, has a symbol. Ayin is I. The truth is that if I bring something into my world and I don't like it, I must have the power to destroy it or change it. If I have to live with all of my creations and I created when I didn't know better and I must live with them, I'm living in hell. So a shin is inserted into the vein of the savior of the world where he brings it in. It's not as he wanted it to be. He can consume it. It's a fire, a three-pronged fire called a tooth for a tooth is a symbol for that which crushes and consumes. It also is a flame, so the flame burns it and destroys it, that I may rebuild it 
into a better shape. So here we have this Yod He Vau Sin Ayin. The name of Joshua, the name of Jesus, the same letter as Yod He Vau is the name of Yehovah, which is I am. That's all that it means. So the whole thing is taking place in us as our own wonderful human imagination. So if you choose that God and no other God, you can't go wrong. This is the God. So I ask everyone here to put it to the extreme test. But if tonight you feel that it may be wrong, suppose I have chosen the wrong God. Suppose now that he really is something external to myself. He hasn't taken up residence in me. He's something on the outside watching me and Neville has misled me to believe in my own wonderful human imagination. Then where am I then? I've gone astray from God. I formally worship to the God he has proposed. I tell you, I know from experience the God of whom I speak. You will meet him one day. And strangely enough, although it's internal, you will see it standing before you as an external being. And it's infinite love and it's articulate and speaks to you as another for he will address you and you will answer the question asked and yet the whole drama is taking place within you and this God is infinite love. And he stands before you and asks you a very simple question. What is the greatest thing in the world? You will answer correctly. You will answer love. He will embrace you and you will fuse and you are one person and forever you are still one person. This infinite being that stands before you is housed within you. He is simply awakening as you remain faithful to your choice to serve the God of Israel. So you make the decision. I either serve him or I don't serve him. If I serve him, I'll walk through here tonight in the assumption that I am already the man. I'm already the woman that I want to be and try to the best of my ability to remain faithful to that tense I am and not say that I will be that eventually. Just I am. And if you do it, I tell you, you will become it in the not distant future. So here, this unalloyed being buried in man, and one day you will see it. It's pure, unmixed, complete, and you will see it as this tree that's cleft in two from top to bottom. And looking at the base, you see the blood of God that sets you free. And you're the imprisoned spirit in that tree is now one with the blood. And up you go, and you are free of this age. But not one child in this world could live unaided by that sacrifice of the life of God. So when we read in the book of Blake, unless I die, thou canst not live. But if I die, I shall rise again, and you with me. And that's true. It's a voluntary act that he gives himself for us, because you and I were subjected unto futility, not willingly. May I tell you in my vision, no one wants to come here. No one and when I spoke of my stories of earth and told them of my experiences on earth, they wouldn't believe me. And not one will believe you. They have not yet been subjected to this section of time. You have been subjected and therefore it's a blessing because everyone that's subjected has told us in the scriptures we were called, we were chosen. He called us in himself before the foundation of time. And having called us, he subjected us without our consent. And he came with us right into this world of death. And then having called us here, those that he foreknew, for he foreknew me, he foreknew you. He now predestines to be confirmed to the image of his son. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. How would he glorify me? Only with himself. He has told us in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John, I have finished the work thou gavest me to do. 
Now glorify thou me with thine own self. And so he glorifies him with himself and gives him fatherhood, for God is a father. And so here, everyone will reach that moment in time when God will glorify him. And that's the end. These are the five stages. Those who for you he predestined. Those whom he predestined he called. Those whom he called he justified. Those whom he justified he glorified. And these are the five stages. I don't see how anyone can interpret these five terms and come to any conclusion other than predestination. Relative to that age, everyone will be taken out of this age, though they may be late by not quite keeping the tense. You have chosen the God of Israel as your God. You may delay the exit because you find it difficult to keep the tense, but you will still be taken out because you come back and back and back time and again to the true God. And finally, you are taken out of this age and into that age called the kingdom of God. So everyone who is here will be transported into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. It's an entirely different world. Isn't this world at all? But while we're in this world, we use God's principle, the same principle, and make our exit not from this stage into that age, but from this state into that state. So we take states here. And so I'm in a state that isn't pleasant, or I know a friend who is in a state that isn't pleasant. And so I represent him to myself as the man that I would like him to be. I believe he's taking place now, so I am faithful to the God of Israel by saying I am seeing it now. I am hearing it. I am continuing to hear it. And always I will hear it because I'm doing it now. And he has to conform to what I'm hearing as true of him. And so I move him from one state into another state. And from that state, after he's exhausted it, into still another state. And that's how we move in this world of ours. And so here tonight, that unalloyed of which I speak is that pure gold of God. It's his blood that made you alive for the life is in the blood. And were it not for that sacrifice, a voluntary sacrifice, you could not breathe in this world. So God himself entered death's door, always with those who enter. And this is death's door. And he lays down in the grave with them in visions of eternity till they wake. And when they awake, God and the one with whom he entered are one. For in the end there is only God, nothing but God, and his name forever and forever is I Am. So tonight, if you have any objective, I hope it is a great, noble objective, but any objective, do it in this simple way. What would you see were it true? How would you see the world were it true? Well, then begin to see the world mentally as you would see it physically were it true and go sound asleep in the assumption that what you are seeing mentally is a physical fact. Just try it. What you see mentally is physical fact. Here, my friend in the city who treated you throughout the year, he takes off for the time that I am here and we are daily together. The story I told you in the book, The Law and the Promise, when he goes in for a record, having seen exactly what he wanted, and the man said, we do not have it. And he replied mentally, not physically, the man did not hear him. That's not what I heard you say. He was so sure what he had imagined and heard mentally was fact, that when it didn't have the echo to support it, he said inwardly, that's not what I heard you say. And then on the way out of the store, the man saw the record, took it off the shelf and then said, oh, here, we do have it. The exact album that you want, the same artist, everything is just as you wanted. He thanked him, took it, and paid for it. But before he went off physically to the record shop, he simply enacted the scene, the scene that would imply the fulfillment of what he wanted in this world. Then he went and asked for it, and the man said, we don't have it, as he said to his friends who tried to get it 
for him for Christmas. And so here is a story based on one's own creative act. The creative act is your own wonderful human imagination. So I hope that you who wrote the letter that I got this morning, I hope you are present. And this country, as our forefathers said, as Robert Frost stated that they said it, they did not believe in the future, they believed it in. The mere passage of time would not bring anything to America. You and I, citizens of America, who love it, we must believe our ideals in. We can't wait and hope that some star who is shining is going to do it for us. The minute you believe that some star, some constellation or teacup leaves or cards or something else has the future of your country in its hands, you have turned from the God of Israel. Choose this day whom you will serve. We choose the God of Israel. What is his name? I am. You choose that as your God, yes. Now you are witnesses against yourself. From that moment on of your choice, you cannot turn to anyone and say they are against me and they are making it impossible for me to realize my objective. The minute you do that, you are not serving the God of Israel for the God of Israel is simply I am. There never was another God of Israel and never will be. All over the world, in spite of claims to the contrary, you will not find such a God. This is the one God in the extreme. You got to the other religions and there are multiple gods. They all have unnumbered gods, but not the God of Israel. Monotheism began in that state of Christianity and is but the fulfillment of Judaism. The true Christianity where one not only believes it, but brings it to fulfillment and all that was promised in the Old Testament unfolds within the individual if he is faithful to the God of Israel. For he himself goes through every experience, not the other one, but he himself, birth, the resurrection, all these things promised in the Old. He, as the individual experiences it, as I am, who was resurrected, I am, and all these things happen in the individual. So here, the God of Israel forever and forever is I am. At the end of these lectures, Neville would give two minutes of silence, which I will do now, and I will discuss following that. Now, let us go into the silence.
This was a wonderful lecture on many different levels. First of all, I know exactly what Neville is going through when he got that letter. I get these weird messages and emails all the time from conspiracy theorists that want to tell me everything, how there's so many problems in the world, secret organizations, elite cabals, vampires, demons, lizard people. And I get that. I understand where you're coming from. But my response always comes to the fact that imagining creates reality. There is no fiction. So if you're dwelling upon conspiracy theories of terrible things happening, or if you're listening to channeled work that's doomsaying, that talks about terrible pole shifts and terrible things happening, just be remembered that imagining creates reality. Take it away from the law if you want to listen to it without it affecting you. But it's important to realize that this world that we're in is because how we believe. Let's believe it in. The story he gives of the trees is so wondrous. And the quote from Blake about walking amongst the ancient trees. Go back to my episode, Conversation with the Trees. It's exactly what I had. I did this experience that God is really a tree. I could see it. And that all the trees are extensions of this thought. And it's an amazing idea that if you wanted to envision God, then you would envision God as a tree. Check out my... You can explore this in a meditation form in my meditation on the Enchanted Forest. There is so many beautifully written phrases that come out of this lecture that are so powerful. And as in some cases, these lectures are speaking to some deeper part of me. I know that's why a lot of you resonate with this material. It's interesting how he spoke. He spoke as if he had seen other places in time, saying that this in particular is a really nasty hell type of existence that we're in, that we're being subjected to in this time setting. And he is sort of trying to say, it's okay. Everybody will go through this and will meet God. And there'll be this point where you meet the God who is within you, but also without. It's very interesting how Neville Goddard walks the tight wire of explaining how you are God, but at the same time you can meet a God that is externalized and it is the personification of love. He is acknowledging and explaining these contradictions and why they still fit, because there is nothing but God. When he says that God is your own wonderful human imagination, what does that mean for you? When I first heard it, I said, oh, that's kind of a cool thing to say. And then I heard it again and I started thinking about it. It has a different meaning for everybody. The word imagination has a different meaning for everybody. When I say that word, you have these memories and experiences where you are thinking of new ideas, you have thoughts that come to you. That's God. That's what he is saying the God of Israel is. And it is the I am. So he's making the call in this right here that there's only one God, and that is the God of Israel. If you follow the God of Israel, that's when you will find your way to be liberated from this realm to another age. And I think of the many lectures in this one, he really completely, continually is saying that we're moving to another age. We're moving to another age, saying it repeatedly throughout this lecture. He is talking about the new earth, I believe. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven for him, which is the next level of existence where you are able to express your imagination immediately in a world and an environment where your imagination is expressed immediately. It still goes on into a whole other plane of existence and there are still polarities and all other issues. It all happens on another level and we continue to move up different levels. Part of what we can't even comprehend and part we do. So I think in many ways when Neville is saying that he's moved to that next level, he may be in the fifth density instead of fourth density. Fourth density is quite different than fifth density. And in fifth density, you're able to immediately create. I think there might be 
some subtleties in the fourth density but you can start to create your own body when you get into fifth density in any case it's such a fantastic and beautiful lecture i hope you enjoyed it and there are several other lectures out there that i would love to get the transcript for if you can find the transcript for there is no evil that would be great and just let me know and i'm continually looking for every single lecture that i can find so that we can put all of these on the reality revolution at some point in time and i promise i'll read the law and the promise soon it's on the way in any case i am imagining love and joy for everybody listening you can find all episodes of the reality revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to the reality revolution <laughs>